Hello, I am Dr. Subramaniam, consultant ENT surgeon, Kims Hospital, Sikindrabad. I am practicing here for the past 12 years. Now, I am going to talk about the common nasal problems and their management. Nose, it adds beauty to the nose. A beautiful face will have a beautiful nose and it's the most prominent structure in the face. Now, what are the common symptoms that come across in the nose that we will discuss? Before that, what are the important functions of the nose? As you are well aware of it, nose gives breathing. It not only gives breathing, it causes humidification. That means it maintains the temperature, uh, temperature of the air going into the lungs. And while taking breathing, what are all the small insects or foreign bodies that come that will be trapped? There is continuous secretions in the nose that has antibacterial activity. That like that, in that way it purifies the air that is we are breathing. Now, what in grossly, what is the structure of the nose? If you look at, it has a central part surrounded by sur surroundings, there is some air cushions are there that is called turbinates and the central one is called as septum. In day to day practice, we see so many patients complaining about sinus, sinus, I am having sinus problem, please operate. What is meant by sinus? In our face, we are having frontal, maxillary, ethmoid and spinoid like these sinuses. Actually, they are air filled cavities. The purpose of these sinuses is to keep the less weight to the head. Now, what are all the symptoms that commonly come across in the nasal part? Most of the people, they complain that I am having breathing difficulty, I am not able to breathe and I am, may need to breathe through the mouth and um, they complain that we are having water coming from the nose or discharge from the nose and then snoring, headache and bleeding from the nose and sometimes the discharge can be purulent like a pus with a bad smell and they, com they also complain of headache and facial pains. With this, what are the reasons for these problems and uh, how to manage that? If you take the patients who are having all these problems and categorize them, we, class we can divide into pediatric case group that is children adolescents and adults. In children or pediatric population, whenever a child complains that there is one side nose discharge with the nose block or breathing problem, first thing we have to suspect is foreign bodies. That is, the child, children while playing, they put some stuff in the nose that can cause discharge and breathing difficulty. This we call it as foreign bodies. They can be like uh, peanuts, peas or seeds and plastic caps and these nap balls, plastic balls and matchsticks and sharp um, safety pins, so on and so forth. But they and recently we have seen a rusted foreign body which was there in the nose for the past six months. This can cause nose block and nasal discharge. And other thing is this adenotonsal hypertrophy, we call it as tonsils and adenites. They also can cause nasal obstruction and mouth breathing difficulty. In children, we can also see these polyps in the nose. Polyps may like some swellings in the nose. But we have to remember that in pediatric age group, we have to su suspect encephalocele or meningocele. That is brain coverings protruding into the nose and presents as a mass in the nose. When, whenever we see such masses in the nose, we should not jump into the treatment uh, surgery before diagnosing it. Coming to the adolescent age group, these nasal obstructions discharge, most likely they go in for what is septal deviation that is called nasal bone bending or this uh, androcranial polyps that call us. That is there is a mass present in the nose going into the nasopharynx or back side of the nose. Most likely they are commonly seen in the adolescent age group. And also in the adolescents, they may present with the bleeding along with the mass that we call it as angiofibromas, that is bleeding masses, we have to evaluate thoroughly and then treat accordingly. The other complaint present is bleeding from the nose. 
the bleeding can be due to fractures in the nose or sinusitis or patients who are having BP and taking some medication for like uh, aspirin, clopidogrels or some cancer drugs and uh, structural there is some masses in the nose like uh, as I told you bleeding masses that is called angiofibromas or carcinomas or cancers all these can present as bleeding from the nose. The other one is headache. The reason for the headache can be due to sinusitis and uh, fractures in the nose. Then one, one more thing is water from the nose. Sometimes patient may complain that I am getting water continuously from the nose like a open tap. That can be due to there is some injury to the skull base where the brain and the nose meet joints. At that area there will be some fractures and then water gets leaked. So some people they say that they, we are having polyps in the nose and sinusitis so manage. The polyps can be due to simple allergic polyps, they can be fungal polyps, the other one is inverted papillomas and malignancies. The allergic polyps because now the, the pollution is seen everywhere that can cause these polypoidal changes that present as a polyps that is allergic polyps and in the immunocompetent people or immunocompromised people they can be like the diabetics, cancer patients are receiving some long standing medications. They will also present with the polyps that can be due to fungal infections. These fungus can be invasive or non-invasive. Accordingly, we have to treat them like the surgery or antifungal treatments. Whenever we, patients present with these problems, we have to first diagnose it and we have to assess what is the reason. Then we have to plan accordingly for the surgery or other managements. The diagnosis starts with diagnostic nasal endoscopy where we can see the structure that is any bone bend is there or any enlargement of the turbidity that is called cushions, air cushions or any polyps present in the nose or any masses seen in the nasopharynx like tumors that you can assess by doing diagnostic nasal endoscopy. That should be followed by a CT scan of the paranasal sinuses can be plain and contrast with that also we can get the information. The treatment point of view depending on the symptoms patient can be managed conservatively or with surgery. Suppose allergic problem is there, we can treat with anti-allergic measures like the decongestants and the sprays. Suppose if there is a foreign body in the nose, we have to treat the foreign, we have to do um, endoscopy and remove the foreign bodies. If fractures in the nose should be dealt with as early as possible. A bleeding from the nose, suppose if it is having any mass in the nose, that has to be treated accordingly by doing surgery. It can be depending on the staging, we have to plan. These polyps and fungal disease we have to do the face that face that is called as functional endoscopic sinus surgery with the help of the endoscopes and debriders. Then the CSF rhinoid what I, what I told you water from the nose that has to be assessed and we have to do surgery and we have to cover the defect with layers of the stru structures present in the local areas. And uh, my fungal pathology after confirming the diagnosis we have to treat accordingly by medical management or injectable drugs. Injectable suppose if the patient is a diabetic or a debilitated condition with the invasive fungal sinusitis we have to treat accordingly the IV antifungal treatment.